What's going on everybody? This is Justin with me, myself, and Dice. And if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. We do solo playthroughs of board games and other board game related content. If this is your first visit, think about hitting that subscribe button and tapping that bell icon so that you're notified of future videos and you help spread the videos around to other people who love board games as much as we do. Today we'll be taking a look at the Imperium series of games from Osprey Games. Specifically we're going to be teaching and playing through Imperium Classics, but the rule set applies to Imperium Legends as well. In this game you're taking your deck that represents your empire and you're acquiring new cards from a general market and from your specialized deck trying to become the best empire. It's a civilization building game that is very exciting and I'm very excited to play it. So let's get down to the table and play Imperium Classic. Welcome down to the table, everyone. We are going to set up for a game of Imperium Classics. Now, if you're not interested in the setup or you already know how to set up the game for solo, then there'll be a timestamp down in the description below. You can skip straight ahead to the gameplay. Otherwise, let's set this bad boy up. We're gonna be setting up for Classic, but the setup for Imperium Legends is the same. Everything you need is going to be right there. The first thing we need to do is set up our market bar like so. Pick our two nations. We'll be playing against the Persians, represented by the purple corner cards. We'll set those aside for now. We'll be playing as the Romans, represented by the red corner cards. We'll put those aside for now as well. Then we need to set up the market, taking all of the common cards and sorting them into separate piles by type. First we have the fame cards with the purple laurel symbol then we have the unrest cards with the red fire symbol next we need the region cards with the yellow region symbol the uncivilized cards are represented by the green leaf but some of the cards are going to have more than one icon at the bottom as long as they have the leaf icon they go into the civilized deck for setup purposes we need the civilized cards, which have only the civilized gray pillar icon on them. And lastly, we need the tributary cards, which have the blue flag. First part of setup, we need the fame cards. We need to locate the king of king cards. There is an A side and a B side. Make sure that the card is on the A side and set it up here above the bar where the icon indicates. Take the rest of the fame cards, shuffle those up, and we're going to remove two from the game. The rest are put sideways with the King and King cards. We can take the unrest cards, no need to shuffle them up, they're all exactly the same, and place those below the bar right there. For the next few decks, we're going to take the indicated icon, in this case the region cards, shuffle those up, deal out six cards, Take the remainder, place them face down over here, deal out one card under the indicated icon that matches, and place the remainder up for a draw pile above it. Same with the uncivilized cards. Place the remainder in this pile with the region cards, flip one over, make a draw pile. Once more with the civilized cards. Lastly, we take the tributary cards and we just simply place them in the common market pile. We're gonna shuffle this up really well. After it's shuffled up really well, take one card and deal it and a second card and deal it out there'll always be two cards under this part of the market bar and then place the rest of the deck right like so next we need to look at the cards and any card that is not a region card gets an unrest card underneath it
the remainder of the cards will go back into its on deck. We need to find our progress tokens and look for any civilized cards that do not have the uncivilized icon. So in our case, only the cataphract is in play. There could be more over here. We place a progress token on that and that's it for setup for the market. Let's set up our player area. For our player area, we're going to need to get our faction deck, the Romans, and we need to separate these into a couple categories. First, we have our power card with the black squiggly lines. Then we have our ascension card, which is in our case, Julius Caesar. It's going to be the card with the circle in it in the bottom. Then we have a stack of cards that have no symbols in the red part. This is going to be our draw deck to start the game. Next, we have moon cards. These cards need to be separated out. And then we have these starred cards that are development cards. If there are any cards with an arrow in the bottom, place those in the unrest deck. First, we need to take our development cards. We don't shuffle these up. They can be in any order. We always have access to these and we need to place them over to the side to look at it any time. Next, we take our Ascension card, in our case, Julius Caesar. We place that over here. We take our Moon cards, shuffle those up face down, and place those sideways over Julius Caesar. We can place our power card over in our play area. We can take our starting deck with no icons, shuffle that up and deal out five cards as our starting hand. We need three action tokens and five exhaust tokens. We start with two population three materials, one progress token, and we need to grab one of these cards that has empire on one side and barbarian on the other. We start out as a barbarian nation and we ascend to an empire hopefully through the game. So we turn it to barbarian and set that also into our play area. That's it for our setup, let's set up the bot. We need to grab the deck of cards for the opposition and it's going to be the Persians with the purple corners. Separate those out just like we did our own. We have their power card, their ascension card, their cards with no icons on it, the moon cards, and the development cards. First, we take their development cards. We look at the victory point value in the bottom left-hand corner and place them in ascending order so that when we flip it over, the lowest victory point is on the bottom. Stars are worth five victory points and question marks are worth whatever it says in the banner. And matching ones, you just randomly put in that order. So these twos are random, these threes are random, these fours are random, but in ascending order. So we flip those over so that they draw the highest victory point first, place that in their play area. We take their Ascension card, in this case, the city of Persepolis, place it on top, grab their Moon cards, flip those over and shuffle them, place those face down on top of that. We shuffle these up to make a draw pile. This is their starting deck. And they'll never really use this card here, but place it over to the side in their play area. We need to give them the six sided chunky die that comes here. Take the tokens labeled one through six. We place them in ascending order uh, below each column of the market deck. Playing with the six is optional. I'm going to place it offset over to the side just for demonstration purposes. We deal out five cards for their first starting hand, one under each number. These go back as the draw pile. They also start out as a barbarian nation, so we give this to them. And lastly, we put the solstice card in between the two of us. They start with no resources, but they do need their AI chart. There is a barbarian side and a empire side. Make sure it's flipped to the barbarian side 
This is one that came off of Board Game Geek. It's updated. It's really nice. Otherwise, you'll find this in the back of the solo rule book locating the correct nation. And that's it for setup. We're ready to play Imperium Classic. Whether you watched the setup or skipped ahead, welcome back, we're ready to play. I have made a few adjustments to set up, but I did want to do that video exactly like the rule book suggests. So some of the changes I've made, just for filming purposes really, are I undealt these five cards, they're turned sideways here to keep the integrity of the first five cards, and this just gives us a little more room to go through our first turn. I have combined my Dynasty deck with my development cards Pretty much like the bot deck is. I have my development cards underneath, the ascension card here, and then the moon card shuffled up above them. And this just means that I can look at these at any time, but they're just out of the way, making a little more space for us to do our player area. I have put the die in with the progress tokens. This is something that I do to remind myself to draw a progress token whenever I roll the die. It's a good memory habit for me. There's a couple things that I do just so I try not to forget little things. And speaking of missing little things, as always, check the description for corrections. And if you see any corrections, definitely leave a timestamp. Let's go through how to do a turn. A turn is structure is very simple. We choose one of three types of turns, activate, innovate, or revolt. And then we do clean up. Most of the time we'll be doing activate. There's a chance we'll do innovate or revolt. So let's talk about these in reverse order. We have our hand of cards here. We have Roman expansion, Dalmatia, which is a region, city of Rome, triumvirate, and an unrest card. So we start with some unrest in our deck. We can take a revolt turn. And what we do during that is we can basically skip our whole turn, take as many unrest cards as we want to or as we have in our hand and return those to the unrest deck. We don't do any other actions, we don't play any other cards, and then we go to clean up as normal. So it's a very expensive way to get rid of the unrest cards, but it's sometimes cheaper than paying the cost listed down here to get rid of a single card as an action. So that is revolt. The next thing, we can do is we can choose to innovate. If there's a card I really want out here, I can choose to innovate. And this means that I take all of my cards in my hand, discard them, and then I break through for a card. Now there are two terms. There is acquire and breakthrough. Acquire simply means if I want to acquire this card, then if I have the proper means of acquiring it, I grab the card and I have to take any tokens and unrest with it. Those go into my hand and then I have to deal with the unrest. Breakthrough means that I could take this card and not take the unrest. I would still take any tokens that are on it. So here with the Cataphract, I would be able to take that progress token and progress tokens are worth one point a piece at the end of the game. Breakthrough also means that I can skip the card and draw off the top of the proper deck. So if I didn't want this region, I could break through for a region on top of this deck. But if I acquire it, I have to take what's available. Also, let's say that there were no tributary cards out and this was something else. If I break through for a tributary card, then I can dig through this deck and grab the first one I come to. So there are different ways that Breakthrough really helps you, but Acquire is very limited. Now, since I mentioned progress tokens, one progress token is a point at the end of the game. At any point in the game, you can also use this to pay, and it represents one population, or it can represent two materials. So it can you can't exchange it out. You just pay with that, and that's what the value is. The last thing that we can do is activate, and this is what we'll be spending most of our turns doing. Activate means that we use, we have three actions natively, there is possibility to get more, and we use those actions to play cards out of our hand. For instance, we could use an action and 
play this card and choose to pay the cost to put this back in the unrest deck. This says choose, pay one population or discard two cards or pay three materials if you do return this card to the unrest pile. So not only is it expensive in the fact that you're discarding two cards or paying a population or paying three resources, but you also have to use an action, which are very valuable. We have a lot of options in our hand, and I think I'm going to start by playing a region. So this is going to be our first action. A region, you know it's because it has the region symbol here, it has a yellow banner, uh, it has a bag symbol up here that may be referred to by other cards, and it has this icon here. This little pin icon with the infinity symbol means you play it to your tableau or your player area. And then we do, we take an action, we play the card, and we do what it says. Gained one population. We, that is not optional. It says gain one population, we have to do whatever it says, and then it says you may garrison a card. So if it has the word may, then we have an option. So we're going to gain a population, play this to our area, and we may garrison a card. We'll place that right there. We're up to three population. And to garrison a card, just to show this off, we'll take our unrest card, and garrison means we place it under here. This means that, temporarily at least, or as long as this card is in play, that card that is garrisoned, in this case the unrest card, is out of our deck. It's not going to be in our draw pile, it's not going to be in our hand, and as we loop through our deck, we have culled it a little bit. However, there are things that will make you recall or discard this card and if you do that then the unrest card goes back into your rotation we also are going to have our history you're supposed to place it under the romans card or your power card i place it under here it's simply that takes it out of the deck for the game we'll talk about that probably in just a minute the next card i want to play my second action i'm going to play the city of rome this has a solstice ability, we'll talk about that when we get to the solstice phase, but it is a pinned card, so it's going to be pinned into our play area. This is going to cost our second action, and we just simply play it, let's say, right there. Now, I didn't mention this in setup, there is an A side and a B side to each civilization. We're playing with the A side, and we'll talk about that when it comes into play. We have two cards left and one action. I think I am going to play Triumvirate. So this will be my third action, and it says break through, so not acquire, but break through for an uncivil uncivilized card, put this card into your history. So I'm going to break through and I can get anything that has a leaf symbol. I can also draw from this deck here. But I'm happy taking City. Now, if I acquired the card, I would take the unrest, but I'm breaking through, so I'm going to take the city and the unrest actually technically goes back to the pile there. Whenever I acquire a card, it goes into my hand, which is fantastic. I love when deck builders take the card and put it in your hand. And then it says, put this card into your history. This means it doesn't go into our discard pile. It's not pinned in our area. It goes into our history. We won't be able to play that ever again. We immediately refill this, and I know it's going to be need an unrest because all uncivilized cards get unrest. So we have a town. Not quite as good as a city, but a very good card. Every card in this game has very good uses in it. That's it for my turn. I'm out of actions, so we go to the cleanup. And the cleanup phase has a very specific order in which you do things. So the first thing we do is we take a progress token and we place it on a card up here. I think, I think I'm gonna place it on the forest. Now there's several things that that can accomplish, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. The next thing we do is we clear up all of our tokens. This means that our action tokens return. And if we had used any exhaust tokens, that they would be returned as well. Some cards may have, in our tableau, may have exhaust abilities. 
So we would return those at this time. And then, I love this, we can discard any number of cards we want to out of our hand and draw back up to our hand size, which is five. So I can keep anything I want, which I think I'll keep city. I think I'm going to discard Roman expansion. And we draw up to five cards. So there's one. We get two, three, four, five. We have one card left in our deck. Then I usually take the Solstice card, this is a me thing, not a, a rules thing, put it here, take a progress token so that at the end of the next turn I remember to place a progress token, and place it over here ready to go. That's it. That's an activation turn. It's pretty simple. Let's go over to the bot turn. And we need to start off by redilling out their first hand of five cards. The next thing we do is we roll a die. We have a five, we place it on the card under that number, and I go ahead and place a progress token here, just so I remember to place this at the end of their turn. What this does is it pins down that card, and just like we didn't play every card out of our hand, they're going to only play the cards that do not have a die on it. Now, if this had rolled a six, first we would not be placing a progress token, we would place it over here, and they will get to play all five of their cards. So I'm glad they didn't roll a six. Then we take their cards, we flip them over one by one. They don't do anything on their cards. Instead, every nation has a specific chart that they're gonna go through that tells them what actions to do that runs them. And every nation still acts very differently, still stays true to what the nation would typically do. We make sure that it's on the barbarian side to match whatever their state is. And we find the first icon or name that matches in this chart. So this is a prosperity card. There are no pin icons. There's no uh, barbarian or empire icon. So we look down and the first thing we find is the word prosperity. So there's no icon down here either. So prosperity and we walk through what it says. First thing it says is discard the top card of the bot deck. So that means we're going to take their deck and discard the top card. This means that they want to run through their deck as quickly as possible, just like kind of we do. Then it says gain one material and one population per region in play. They look up here, we, they haven't played a region down yet, so they get zero resources. So that's gonna set them behind. Then it says you may draw a card, and whenever it says you, it means me as a player. So unless it says otherwise, we discard their card, and we can draw a card, which will be our last card. It's our advance, it goes into our hand. And now our deck is empty. That was very simple, you go on to card number two. It's a conquer card. We look and the first thing that we can match up is this barbarian symbol. And this is kind of the biggest one they do on the barbarian side. It says, if able, spend three population. Well, we know they have no population, they didn't start with any, and they didn't gain any through their prosperity card. And they would use that to break through for a tributary card. So they're not going to do that, so they continue to go on. Otherwise, if able, spend two material resources to acquire a civilized or uncivilized card. They have no material resources either. Otherwise, gain one material and one population and put this card on top of the bot deck. So they're going through this and doing the first thing that they can fully do. If they couldn't do that, they would go down and find the next thing that matches. And if nothing matches, they would do other. So we're gonna do the third one, which means they're going to gain one of each resource. We'll house those up here. And then it says, put this card on top of their deck. That means that it'll be dealt out into their hand next time. They wanna compound this so that they can do that big action where they spend three population. That's it for that one. They go to the next one. It is a glory card. They're playing their good cards before they've set up. So glory is the first word we find or icon. It says glory, if able, abandon three regions. Well, we talked about they don't have any regions out yet. To gain the top fame card, otherwise break through for a region. So they can't get a fame card because they don't have three regions, so they're gonna break through for a region card. Now this just means they're gonna take this one right here, 
but if there were no region cards out, they would break through and dig through that deck. So we replace it with a region. Remember, regions never get unrest. And they take the progress token that was on this card that we placed. When they acquire a card, it goes on top of their deck. And the progress token goes in their supply and will count as points later on. This card gets discarded and they go to the next card, which is another region card. We look down and we're going to play this. It says gain one population. So every region is going to come with a population for them. Play this card and then exile a card from the market. So they're going to play this card down. We're just going to make a stack here. It doesn't matter what else is on the card. We just need to see how many they're doing. They're basically going for sets of three. So they gained a population, played the card, and now they need to exile a card from the market. So to exile a card means to remove it from the game completely, and they always exile the first card or the lowest card with no tokens on it. They never discard a card or exile a card with a token on it. So they wouldn't ever choose to do this. That was one reason that I put it on the region that I did. But they're going to go for this one. They exile this card. This little icon at the end of the bar means exile goes over here. We draw the next card to replace it. It's a tributary, so it does keep the unrest card. They've played all of their cards, so now they're going to place a progress token above whatever column they're in, so they're gonna place it here. And then they move this card all the way down, and they refill their hand. They have two cards left in their deck. That's it, that's it for their turn. This chart gets pretty simple to go through and a lot faster to go through as you do it several times. Before we go back to our turn, we would technically, remember when we set this up, we set up the Solstice card here. When we pass back over the Solstice card from the last player to the first player, we take a Solstice phase. This means that we look in our tableau and do anything that says Solstice. So we have our City of Rome card. Our City of Rome card says Solstice. You may discard a card to choose to gain one resource either a population or material, or draw a card. So let's look at our hand. So I could, for instance, discard this unrest. That would probably be good. And then I can either gain a resource or draw a card. I tell you what, let's draw a card and see what happens. We go to our deck. There is nothing in our deck to draw. So in most games, we would just simply shuffle the discard pile and draw again. But my favorite part about this game is not only are we building from the cards in the market, we are also building from our very specific nation deck, our dynasty deck. We come up here to the dynasty deck and we take the first card, we flip it over, it is bread and circuses, that's gonna be good. That's gonna help us get rid of some unrest. And we shuffle it into our discard pile And this is how we are going to get some really awesome cards into our deck. We deal out the top card. It is Roman Expansion. And now we have a brand new deck with a brand new card in it. So that's the Solstice turn. We don't do, have anything else. So now we can take our actions. I think I'm going to play first and foremost Roman Expansion. It says acquire a region. Then you may acquire a second region or region again. Each other player recalls a region. Put this card into your history. A lot going on there. So first thing we do is we acquire a region. I definitely want to acquire this one and I get the progress token on top. This goes into my hand. This goes into this area. And we need to replace this here with a coast. So I may acquire another region. Let's acquire the coast as well. That gets replaced. And then it says each other player recalls a region. So that means that they're going to recall. There's two words. There is recall and abandon. Recall means it goes back. It will be in our hand, but it goes back on top of their deck. If they abandon a region, it goes into their discard. So this means that they'll be able to get it out relatively fast, but they're going to recall the region. Then it says, put this card into your history. So a very, very powerful card, but we need to put it in our history. Now, one thing I'll point out for us, 
The barbarian symbol right here means that we can only play this while we are a barbarian nation. If we were to ascend and still have this in our deck, then we wouldn't be able to play it because the icons don't match. So in this case, we did play it. We put it in our history and that card's gone. I think that I want to play Conquer as my second action. It says choose, pay two population to acquire a region or a tributary, or I can pay three to break through for a region or a tributary. And this means I wouldn't have to take the unrest underneath it, but I'm just going to acquire the Assyrians right here. They both go into my hand because I have to take the unrest. We replace this, and it's with a step, which is a region, so that does not get an unrest. Now, one of the in-game triggers is if this deck ever runs out, then we immediately lose. It's a, it's a complete loss for both, both civilizations. We, we have been overturned by unrest and cease to exist. So we don't want that to happen. Other ways that we trigger the end game is when this deck runs out, the end game is triggered. When this deck runs out and the King of Kings is flipped over, then the end game is triggered. And if somebody runs through all of their development cards, obtains all of their development cards, then the end game is triggered as well. So we have paid that, we have played that card. It would technically go into our discard, but I like to leave them up here until the end. And then, let's see, I think, I think I'm going to play the city card. City card is a pinned card, as you see up top, and it has a solstice ability, the exact same ability that our city of Rome has. So we're going to place that under here, just so we can see both of them. That's our three actions. We need to place a token. Let's place it on the step because I don't want them to discard that. We discard cards we played, put them where they go. We clean up the tokens and we can decide what we're going to do about discarding. Um, I'm going to discard Unrest, Glory. I'm going to keep Assyrians. I'm going to keep Marsh. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to discard everything but Assyrians and Marsh. So they go into my discard deck. I have two cards left. However, whenever we gained this card, we should have put an exhaust token on it. That means that during your turn, you can't go through this deck more than once. It, it kind of regulates how fast you can go through gaining these cards. However, in our cleanup phase, not only would we clean up these, this is why the, the order is important, we would also clean up any exhaust markers. So now this is free. So we're gonna draw these two cards. So we need to draw a card and we need to add one and it is uh, Aquitania. And that goes into this region. It goes into our deck, shuffle that up and deal ourselves one more card to get up to five. There we go, that's our hand, and we need to put an exhaust token on that. The bot's turn, they need to roll a die, and they rolled a six, of course they did. So they're gonna play out all five of their cards and not put a progress token out. So, first one they have is Unrest. Now this is not in the rule book, this is uh, only in the errata. It is fixed on these player aids right here, because it's not in the book. Simply, when you draw an unrest card, it goes, for the bot, it goes back into the unrest deck. That's all it is. They're trying to get rid of their unrest as much as and fast as possible. That's all they do. Pretty simple, but it's just missed in the Silver so Rulebook. They have a region, forest. We know that that comes with one population. We place that in their play area. They now have three population and one one material that means if they pull a conquer card or advance card they can fire off the big the big part of it the first part of it and we need to exile a card so they're not going to exile this one even though it's the lowest because it has a token on it so they're going to exile the hittites 
Hittites go there, and they pull another tributary card. It is the Sumerians. Next card is a Conquer card. Barbarian symbol is going to be the first thing we come up to. If able, spend three population. Well, we just said they have three. And they're going to break through for a tributary card and then put this card into their history. So they're going to grab Sumerians, but not the Unrest. They draw another card. It's Axumites. It does get the Unrest. Sumerians goes on top of their deck. And this card is going to go in their history. And again, I just put their history underneath this. Card number four is going to be another Barbarian card. Advance and Conquer are their two cards that have this symbol. They can't spend three population because they just did. They can't spend two resources or two material resources because they only have one. So otherwise, gain one of each and put this card back on top of the bot deck. So we're going to put that on top of the bot deck. And now they're going to have two of those resources. And the reason that they put this card into their history is they want to get rid of all the Barbarian cards as fast as possible. They want to keep their deck really thin. Card number five. Bactria is going to be a region. We know it comes with a population. We play that down and we exile a card. It's going to be the Axumites because it's the lowest card without a token. And out comes Exports, which is a uh, civilized card. That's it for their turn. They don't place a progress token, so they deal out three, four, and five. That's the end of their deck, but they don't ascent or they don't draw from their dynasty deck and shuffle until they have to draw a card which will be the next turn we go through the solstice phase and now we can do this optionally two times where we may discard a card to gain resources so let's discard a card the unrest card to gain one population and then I think, I think I'm good. I think that that's all I'm going to do. I think I'm going to skip the second one. It says you may, so I can skip it. Uh, yeah, I think I am. Okay, so that was our solstice phase. Now we're going to do our actions. First thing I want to do is Assyrians. Assyrians says free to play. This means it does not cost us an action. We're going to gain one population. Very simple. For our next card, we're going to play, I think, the Marsh. That's going to be played down into our area. It says gain two resources. So we can take the three that we have, three that we have, and we can actually exchange it out. There are fives and tens. Fives are these little smaller ones with the dots, and these have the double set of dots. So we have five of these resources now. Then it says exile a card from the market. So I have to choose a card to exile. I'm gonna exile town. We draw the next one. It will get an unrest because it's uncivilized and it's Oracle, well, that's a good card. And then it says you may garrison a card. I'm not going to garrison a card, but I could if I wanted to. So I'm not going to. Then I'm going to, for my second action, play Bread and Circuses. This is a pinned card, one of our special cards. has a Solstice ability that allows me to get rid of Unrest. So very exciting. Let's put that right here. For my last action, I'm going to play Advance. I can either choose to pay three of my materials or five. I'm going to only pay three and acquire a civilized or uncivilized card. If I paid five, I could break through. So I'm just gonna pay three. And I'm going to, I was going to acquire Cataphract, but I think I'm going to acquire Oracle instead. Oracle says free to play, draw two cards, then discard one of them. That could come in very handy. Yeah, I think I'll do that. That goes into my hand, that's my three actions. These get discarded. We put a progress token here, and I think we need to refill this. Let's see what that is. Ooh, mysticism. 
I'm going to put one on mysticism. I'd like to try to get that. Clean up our area. This exhaust token comes off. I'm going to keep Oracle. We draw four more cards. So there we go. It's the bot's turn. They're going to roll a die. They roll a two. Put a progress token there. And they're going to start with card number one. It's their advanced card. They want to spend three population. They can't. So they go to the next one, which is spend two uh, materials. I'm having a trouble remembering what those are today. Spend two materials to acquire a civilized or uncivilized card. So they want to acquire a card, and the way that they acquire a card is that they look at the victory point value plus any tokens on it. So they're looking for civilized and uncivilized. This one is worth one plus one, so two. Two plus one, three. This one is worth five because it's a star. All the cards at the end of the game for them are worth five points uh, with a star on it. So they're going to take this. They acquire it, so they do get the unrest. That goes on top of their deck. They replace it with Diplomacy, which will get an unrest card. Next card, card number three, is a region. It comes with a population. This should have been discarded. And they want to exile a card from the market. The first one they're in exile is Diplomacy. And they're going to bring in boats. Card number four is a tributary card, but it has the barbarian symbol. So we look here, and tributary is before barbarian. So they're going to do the tributary action first, unless they can't do it. But they can usually always do this one. Gain two of each resource, discard the top card from the bot deck, put this card into history. So one step at a time, they have two more of those, two of those, so they're up to five population. They're going to discard the top card of their deck, which is that unrest. The only benefit for us is that it at least keeps their unrest in their deck. And then they're going to put this card into their history here. Card number five is an unrest card. Very simple. It goes back to the unrest pile. Put a token on boats, slides down, and they refill. They only have one card in their deck. So they're going to do just like us. They're going to take their discard pile add a the top moon card i don't it doesn't say whether you can look at them or not i typically just don't because if it was another player i wouldn't know what it is so now that i've gotten to know their deck a little bit i like that air of not knowing what to expect and then we finish dealing out their cards and there's their new draw deck with three cards in it solstice turn and we're going to see now that i have these great abilities here but this makes me discard a card. So even if I can't uh, do anything with this, so let's see what it says. It says, discard a card, you may return a unrest card from your hand, and you may return an unrest card from your discard pile. So even if I have no, let's say I had no unrest in my deck, then I still would have to discard a card. So that card is very expensive because we're putting on circuses and, and gladiatorial events and such. It costs our empire money. I think I'm going to discard Conquer to draw a new card. Prosperity. Okay, I like that card. Um, I only need one of these cards, so let's get rid of Aquitania. And do I have Unrest in here? I do have the one Unrest here and none in my hand. So I'm going to discard that one for the bread and circuses. So that means I can return any unrest from my hand and my discard pile, one of each. I only have one in my discard pile and none in my hand, so we're going to return that. So I'm going to opt not to do the next one. I think that's good. Okay, so that's our Solstice turn. Then we are going to play a card. We're going to play Oracle first. Free to play. Draw two cards and discard one of them. Well, I only have one card in my deck. It's an unrest. And let's uh, set that to the side. So I'm going to be able to grab another region. We're all about regions in the Roman Empire. Uh, Gratia. I don't know if I'm saying that one right. Shuffle those up. Put an exhaust token on that. And draw our second card. Conquer. So d draw two cards and discard one of them. I think I'm going to discard the unrest card. Makes sense. 
All right, that was free to play for my first action. I think I'm going to play the coast. The coast says draw a card, get Assyrians. Ooh, that's nice. Exile a card from the market. I think I'm going to exile boats. Now, when I exile a card that has a token on it, that token is removed as well. It doesn't go to anybody, it just goes back to the supply. Boats goes out of play. Draw a card, it's Armenians. And then I may garrison a card. I don't think that I will. No, I don't think I'm going to. Okay. And I just stack mine up like this so I can see the, the icons up here. But right here, I, I keep that separate because it has a garrison card underneath. That was my first action. Let's go ahead and play Assyrians. It's free to play. It gets us one population. Then I think I want to play Prosperity. That costs an action. And it says all players may draw a card. So let's start with that. Whenever the bot player is instructed to draw a card. Now if they're instructed to discard a card, they never do anything. But to draw a card means they discard it because that's going to allow them to go through their deck faster. And then we may choose one. Gain one materials per bag icon. So we have three bag icons we could gain three materials or we can choose one to gain one population per region we have in play so we have three regions in play that's going to even out i'm going to gain three materials i believe so here we go three materials one for each bag icon and that is going to be our prosperity card for our third action, we're going to play Glory, and this is one of the big cards in our deck. This is what they've been building up to and we've been building up to. This card cannot be garrisoned, so I can't put it underneath a region. Abandon three region cards to look at the top two cards of the fame deck. Take one of those cards. So first thing we need to do is abandon three regions. Abandon means these goes in our discard pile, and remember, anything garrisoned underneath goes back into rotation, so this goes into our discard pile. As well but that's fine we have a good easy way to get rid of them then we look at the top card two cards of the fame deck but this is where we need to look at our roman special ability passive whenever you look at any number of cards from the fame deck look at an additional card and gain one progress token so we're going to look at the top three and we get our third progress token so we take the top three, we look at those, and we have some great options here. Now, one thing, these cards have some big victory point values in it. But sometimes they also have really, oh, this is going to be hard, really big powers in it. So for instance, this says, for, great, it says free to play, gain one action, you may put this card into your history. And the reason we may want to put it into our history is that it's worth six victory points if in our history two otherwise so if at the end of the game it's in our history it gains six points otherwise it's going to be two triumphant cannot be played cannot be garrisoned it stays in our rotation unless we can get it in our history but it's worth 11 points that's a great later game card and then passive increase our hand size by one awe inspiring i think that's the one i'm going to take so we'll put the other ones back We'll take awe inspiring into our hand and we can hopefully play it next turn. So that's a big thing. Remember that if this gets to King of Kings and then we can flip that, then we can trigger the end game. But also those are big, powerful cards in terms of scoring and usually in terms of ability. That's it for our actions. So we're going to place this and I think I'm going to place it on Oh, this is tough. Uh, let's place it on. Let's place it on Armenians. We'll discard these cards because we played them. Nothing goes in our history that we did. And then we have these two. I think I'm going to keep them. If I discard them, I could... I can go through my deck again because we cleaned up this. This should have been taken off. Actually, I think I'm going to take my chances. I'm not buying a lot. And there's a lot of good cards out there that I might want. 
So I tell you what, let's keep, uh, this is so tough. Let's keep Conquer, discard All Inspiring, and we can draw back up to five. There's four, so we're going to flip the next card, and we get, we do have another Unrest in our Moon deck. That's fine, it's easy to get rid of, but it gets us a little further through our deck. Hopefully, I actually want to draw an Unrest for the Bread and Circuses in our Solstice phase. And I have three, I believe. So we flip the next one, it is Oracle. Okay, let's roll the die for them. They roll a six again, great. So, Sumerians, it's gonna be a tributary card. They're gonna gain two of each resource. So two more population and two more materials. That means they can do anything that is on their sheet. Then we discard the top card of the bot deck. That's gonna be this one. And then we put this card into their history. Which is nice because if it was a player card, if it was us, we couldn't actually play this. We'd have to just find a way to get rid of it. So, but it's worth three points. Next card is going to be Exports. Now, we can't play these uh, Empire cards until we flip to an Empire. However, the bot, according to Nigel, does not care. They, they can cheat. They're going to play it, but it just depends on what side they're on. So it's going to be more powerful card when they flip over to Empire because that symbol actually exists over here. But now they look through and it has an attack icon. We don't see that. We don't see an Empire icon. Uh, there's no tributary or no uh, civilized icon. So they're going to go all the way to the bottom and do other. If able, acquire a tributary card. Otherwise, if able, gain a... Uh, uncivilized card otherwise put this card into history so they're going to acquire the Armenians which I really wanted and then they're going to discard this card so they're gonna get Armenians and they're going to get the unrest the unrest always goes on top when they put this on deck and this goes in their pool so one there again unrest is always the top card and they've added that to their supply the cheaters, they're going to pull their glory card and they have three they're going to abandon and they're going to pull the top card of the fame deck and then they're going to discard this card to keep it in rotation so they have just gained some probably some big points. All right, they do their fourth card. It's their prosperity card. Well, the good thing is, is that they have no regions in play. They're gonna discard the top card from the bot deck. Oh, they got the triumphant. That's 11 points for them later on. They're gonna discard that. And they're going to gain one of each resource per region in play. Well, they just got rid of those. And then we may draw cards. So they're gonna discard this and we can draw a card. We get Assyrians, fantastic. Last card, number five is going to be their Barbarian card, and we know that they have plenty of resources, so they're going to spend three population. Oh, we should have done this. We didn't. Okay. And they're going to break through for the card that we just drew, so the chin. That goes on top of their deck. We immediately replace that. It's a region, so the unrest goes back to the pile. And then they're going to put this card into their history. It's triggered its big event. So they're going to get rid of it. That's it for them. Let's refill. No progress tokens come out. They only have four cards. So they are going to add one. Shuffle that up. So I feel like in that one turn, they've gotten ahead of us just a little bit. We deal out one card and they have a good number of cards in their deck, which means they're going to go through it a little slower this next turn. It's our turn with the solstice phase and, oh, what do I want to do? Didn't get any unrest. Okay, let's get rid of Aquitania. We're going to discard that to draw a card. Oh, unrest, fantastic. We're going to discard unrest to draw a card. All right, that's our two optional ones. Now we can discard a card to get rid of unrest. Let's discard prosperity. 
and we'll return an unrest to the top of the deck. Now we've kind of hit this part of the game where about halfway through, you don't have to worry about the unrest, at least not with these two empires. We're gonna have enough unrest in the reserve pile that I'm not really worried about losing the game. It's usually earlier in the game where your empire can fall apart through unrest. So that's good. All right, so we've done our solstice phase, we've done our bread and circuses, and we can play our cards now. Let's do free to play, draw two cards and discard one of them. So we get Marsh and Awe Inspiring. I'm definitely gonna take Awe Inspiring. We're gonna play free to play Assyrians, which gets us a population. We're gonna take one action to play Awe Inspiring. We'll put this up here with Bread and Circuses. This is going to give us a increased hand size by one next time we draw back up. Looking at our deck, we are only one moon card left, and then once we get the Julius Caesar card, so if we go through our deck two more times, then we flip to an empire. So I wanna start thinking about these barbarian cards, what to do with those so they don't clog up my deck. I think one thing I can do is I can play Ratia and get one material and then I may garrison a card let's garrison for the time being let's garrison our conquer card so that's going to go there and then for my third action I'm going to play an advance which is pay three to acquire three materials to acquire a civilized or uncivilized card I'm going to take this civilized cataphract so that means I take the unrest and the progress with it. We're up to four progress. These go into my hand. And that's it for my turn. Nothing goes into my history. We need a progress token on something. Let's go ahead and replace this. It's going to have an unrest on it. Coinage. Um, let's actually put one on coinage. Discard these cards, and I'm going to discard both cards from my hand. I can't play that yet anyway. And we're going to draw up to six cards now because of all inspiring. One, two, three, four, five, and that's a new card for us. We get another our second prosperity. So I may want to think about with two prosperity cards gaining maybe another land. Maybe that step because it has two bags on it. That may be good. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so we got two unrest cards. That's great. Glory, Dalmatia, Coast, and Prosperity. So uh, we actually may be set up next turn to do our Prosperity, Glory combo. Mm, that may be good. Okay, they roll the die, and they roll the big chunky one. Let's add a Prosperity token here, and start flipping cards. Unrest card immediately goes back. Tributary card, gain two of each resource. So let's make this a five with one left over. So they're up to six and we'll do the same thing here. They want to discard the top card of the deck. It's gonna be that one. And they want to put this card into their history. Card number four is an unrest card. And that's good because they're not taking actions. That's the only good thing about that. All right, so we know that a region comes with a population. That brings them up to seven. They play this and exile a card. They're going to exile Floodplain because it's the first one without a token on it. They pull out another city card and put an unrest on it. Progress token goes on step. That definitely makes that of interest to me and they deal out a new hand of five one two three four to get them up to five they have four cards left in their deck solstice phase i will discard an unrest card to draw a card who cataphract can't do anything with that let's discard cataphract to draw a card okay and then i'm going to discard uh, aquitania so that i can get rid of an unrest card from my hand and an unrest card for my discard for that bread and circuses. 
and that feels really good. I think for our first two actions, we're going to play Coast first, draw a card. We get, ooh, the Marsh. We play that down, exile a card from the market, you may garrison a card. Exile a card from the market, I'm actually going to exile River and see what comes up. It's going to be Jungle. And I don't want to garrison a card, so we'll move on to... I think I'm going to play Marsh as my second action. This allows me to gain two materials. So we're up to five there. Exile a card from the market. I'm actually going to exile the city card. And we get money lenders. And then we may garrison a card. I don't think I'm going to do that either. Prosperity card. Let's go ahead and get some sort of income here. I think I'm going to choose to gain one population per region. But first I get to draw a card. Okay, advance. Uh, and the bot player gets to discard a card. Bam. And I'm going to get three population, one for each region I have. One, two. So that's going to make this where we can put this to a five and take two away. And that's eight. That's it for my actions. Let's put this on. Uh, do, 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 step. Let's put this on step. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, we need to discard prosperity. Clean up. And do I want to keep? What do I want to keep? I want to keep glory. How many cards do I have in my deck? Four. So if I discard everything, actually I can keep one and still do a good job. I really would like to play this though. Okay, well, let's discard everything but glory, and we're going to draw up, because I know there's going to be another prosperity card in this, so up to six. Assyrians, Oracle, Unrest, and Prosperity. So that's five. I need to draw. I can't, so we draw Julius Caesar. This is a very powerful one-use card, but the big thing is it means we can become an empire. Bad thing is, is I have this Oracle card that I can't play right now. So we're going to have to figure out what to do about that. Shuffle this up. And I get one more card. We do need to put an exhaust token on that. And I get, ooh, another prosperity. Rolling the die, they roll a six again. Good grief. All right, so they're going to play the chin. And it's a tributary card. They're going to gain two of each resource. There we go two of each resource, discard the top card of their deck, and then put this card into their history. Their history is getting a little thick. Next card is going to be a region that comes with a population. So they're up to 10 population. Yeah. And they exile a card, they're going to exile moneylenders. And they get mountain. Next is their Prosperity card. Okay, Prosperity. Discard the top card from the bot deck. They do that. Gain one of each resource per region in play. So they have two regions in play. That means they're going to gain two resources. So that means they're going to trade the five and three in for a ten. And they're going to do the same here and have a ten there. They discard this, and we may draw a card. I most certainly will. We get advance. Next card is another region. They gain a population. They exile a card. It's going to be mountains. And they draw, ooh, urban development. That's a good card, but I don't think it's going to be good for us this game. And then they pull their glory card right after they hit three in. That was good timing. So they're going to abandon three. They're going to draw the top card here. And that stinks because I 
really don't want them to take what I think's next. And that's it. They're going to discard this, and then they're done. So they're going to, no progress tokens, so one, two, they're out, so they're going to draw the next one. They are two away from Ascending the Empire. So we, we've gone a little bit faster than them. Hopefully that means we can get some of these stronger cards and start playing those. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. All right, shuffled up, four, five, and they have, looks like seven in their draw deck. Solstice phase. I want to discard an unrest to draw a card. Okay, let's discard one prosperity to draw a card. Oh, we got our Caesar card. Let's discard Oracle. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, let's discard Oracle. Because we can't play it because it has the Barbarian symbol. And that's going to be our un for our Bread and Circuses. That will allow us to put this Unrest back in the deck. That is our Solstice phase. We have three. And... Oh, this is tough. Well, let's play Assyrians because it is free to play. Gain one population. Let's play down Dalmatia. It's gain one population. You may garrison a card. I'm going to garrison advance. So let's do that. And I need to gain a population. Let's play Prosperity down. That's the second action. We can draw one card. The bot's going to discard a card. They discard a region. And we can gain Population or Materials. Let's see. One, two, three, four. We can gain four Materials. Let's do that. So we'll trade one in and pull a five. And then for our last action, we're going to play Glory. And this is why I was sad that they got to it before we did. We gain a progress token, remember, for our special ability with the Romans. That brings us up to five progress tokens. So we can exchange that for a fiver. We abandon three cards. I think... I actually think I'm going to abandon these two and uh, Dalmatia, yeah. So that means this this one I just garrisoned, I didn't think that through, is going to go back into our discard. And then we can look at the top three cards because of our ability, so the last three cards. Uh, see, Praiseworthy, that would be good. That would be really good. All of these would be good. So Marvelous says free to play, which is always great. Draw the top card of your deck if able, choose to discard it or return it to the top or put it into your history. So that would be a really good way to get rid of some of these Barbarian cards. However, we could start building, I really think I'm going to do this one. Choose, put the top card, or put this card in your history. And the reason is because we're seven if in history, three if not. Or we can break through for a, any card, any card. So let's actually do Praiseworthy. The other one is the, another Triumphant with 11. Uh, so we're going to do that. That goes into our hand. We're out of actions. Discarded, we need to place something somewhere. And I think I'm going to place it on Mystic. No, let's place it on Coinage. These get cleaned up. This exhaust marker comes off of that. We have two fantastic cards, two in deck, so let's go ahead and draw, keep this, keep those two, draw those, and we get to gain a new card. However, this is where this changes. We can choose any one of these cards. We don't have to draw the top one. We can choose any one of these cards. However, they do have a cost. They have high victory point values, uh, two to four, and this one is one for every three population. 
but they have really awesome powers. Um, I think, so we'll go through these. Uh, Emperor Trajan, acquire any type of card. Um, that, that is any type of card. Yep, any type of card. Put this card into your history. So it's going to be a one-time use. It costs two material and one. So it's pretty cheap. Emperor Trajan. Uh, Rome. So this will take the place of this card, but it's a better solstice. We don't have to discard a card. We just gain resources or draw a card. That's always a really good one to get pretty fast. You may acquire Roman Invasion. It's an attack card. You may acquire either a region or a tributary. Each other player abandons a region. And that's good for keeping them from going through the glory deck and gaining more. That, that's a possibility for us. This one says you may acquire a civilized card. You may put a card from your hand into your history. That would be really good for getting rid of some of these barbarian cards. Uh, I may choose that one, actually. Get some stronger cards. Each other player discards two cards. Military Engineering, also an attack card. Uh, discards two cards. You may break through for a civilized card. And Legions, passive, increase your hand size by one, always a good thing. Your Conquer cards lose. See, this one may be good too, because our cards that have the Barbarian symbol lose that symbol, meaning we can still play them. Oh, that's so tough. So tough. Such good cards. I think I'm actually going to do Legions. You don't typically do Legions, but I think I'm going to do Legions, and it's going to cost me three population. So we're going to pay three population. It goes into our discard pile, just like any other card, and then we shuffle that up. We do put an exhaust counter on that. And then we have four cards with a limit of six, five, six. Okay, they're gonna roll the die and they roll a three, put a progress token on that. Number one is going to be great. It's gonna be, that's the card I really wanted. Uh, so we look and there is a fame icon right here. Discard the top three cards of the bot deck. One, two, three. And then put this card into history. Pretty simple, but it's going to get them to go and get caught up a little bit. Next card. It's triumphant. Same thing. Discard the top three cards. They only have three left. And put this card into history. Then we have exports. It's an attack card, an empire card. So none of those appear. We go to other. If able, acquire a tributary. There's no tributary cards. Otherwise, if able, acquire a uncivilized card. They can acquire an uncivilized card. It's going to be a mysticism. That gives them another token and an unrest. That goes top of their deck with unrest on top. This gets discarded. If they couldn't do those two, then this just would go in history. Card number five is prosperity. So discard the top card of the bot deck. That's that unrest card. Gain one of each resource per region in play. They have no regions in play. And then I may draw a card. So we'll discard that. I'm going to draw the Legion card. Yes, awesome. Okay, they're going to put a token there. Slide that down. Deal that card. They're out, so they're going to draw their last Moon card. So they're going to catch up with us. We do need to flip this one and add an unrest to it. Agriculture. Oh man, so that's a really good card. That one would be great for us. We could, it says treat one grain symbol. If you can see that, treat one grain symbol for three bags for the rest of this turn. Oh, it's so good at getting material resources. It makes you not really want to get population whenever you do a prosperity. Card. There we go. They have three, four, five, six, seven, eight in their deck. It's our solstice phase, and we have a bunch of cards. Let's see. What do I want to do? Well, I definitely want to play legions down. I don't need glory. Let's discard that and draw a card. Assyrians, I want to keep. Let's get rid of this card, Dalmatia, as just as the Bread and Circuses card. We're not going to do the other card. Okay. 
So that's the solstice phase, and we're going to play Assyrians for free to gain a population. Let's play Gala Aquitania. And it says you may garrison a card. I'm not going to. Let's play Praiseworthy. Again, it says you can put this card into your history. I'm not going to. Or break through for a card up here. This is worth more. I think I'm going to take this one right here. So I get three more. That gives me up to five, six, seven, eight. And I take coinage, but I break through so I don't gain the unrest. And Temple comes out. Oh, that's a really good one. That would be a fantastic one. And did I discard Legions? I didn't mean to discard Legions. I accidentally discarded Legions. I was, sorry, I knew that's one I wanted to play. Uh, so Legions is passive. Increase your hand size by one. Your Conquer cards lose their Barbarian symbol. Let's put that right here so that we remember to increase our hand size. So now we have hand size of seven. That's fantastic. That's all three of my tokens, or all three of my actions. So we can clean up, place a progress token first. Let's place it on temple. I'd like that to stick around. And then, ah, oh, so tough, so tough. Let's keep coinage and discard Cataphract and Julius Caesar. So our hand size is seven, so one, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the end of our deck. Also, we need to take this off to free that up. They roll a four, progress token, and let's see what they're doing. They're very close. Okay, gain a population, they're very close to getting uh, ascending. So population and they exile a card. They're going to exile urban development. It's the first one up here. Let me clean this up. And they draw Egyptians. Oh, that's a good card. Oh, that's a really good card for us. Hopefully it's still around. Next one is going to be mysticism. It is a pinned card. So they're going to look there. If able, acquire a region. Oh, stink. That stinks. Oh, that stinks. Put this card into history. Okay, so they're going to put this into their history, and they're going to acquire a region. And guess what? That's going to be the step. So we're going to trade in two that they have out of their three that they have, plus the three they're going to get for a five. So bam. We need to replace this with Metropolis. That gets an unrest. Step goes on top of their deck, and they now have six points. Conquer. All right. They're going to want to spend three population. They have it. They want to break through. They're going to take Egyptians. They don't take the unrest. They draw the next card, and it is Shrine. And then they're going to put this card into their history. Card number five is Exports. Uh, neither attack or this are hit up yet, so they want to acquire a tributary. There are none out there, so they want to acquire a um, uncivilized card. So, uncivilized card, they look, that's one victory point. This one is going to be technically worth five for them, so they're going to take this and they're going to take the unrest with it on top of their deck. Last card here. Now, the next time that they we need to draw from this, whenever a a deck is empty in a column, this symbol no longer matters. We just draw the top card here and whatever it is, we put it just like, basically this part of the market expands. And it'll make it start going faster through this deck. They're gonna place one on elders, move this down, and deal out some cards. There we go. This goes in their discard. Our solstice turn and Let's see, what do I want to accomplish this turn? I think I'm going to discard Oracle to draw a card. So that means that we can gain a new card here 
And I think I'm going to take Senate because that allows me to put cards from my disc or from my hand into history. Because now that I have a hand size of seven, I really would like to thin this deck down a little bit. I have a lot of card draw too, so that's really good. Uh, so we are going, we discarded to draw. All right, there we go. We got Senate. Fantastic. Let's see. I definitely want to play. I definitely want to play that. So let's get rid of Coast to draw a card. I don't think I have any unrest. Oh, praiseworthy. Let's get rid of one prosperity to satisfy bread and circuses. Okay. Um, I want to get the marsh out. So let's go ahead and do that. It gains me two, two materials. Exile a card from the market. Let's exile shrine. Actually, I don't want them to gain any more regions. Oasis. So if I can run this out, then it's less likely that regions will be out here because I don't want them hitting that glory card, if at all possible. So we gain two, exile card from the market. We may garrison a card. I actually think I'm going to not garrison anything. Okay, let's play the Senate. That's gonna be our second action. I may acquire a civilized card. We're gonna take Temple, that gives us another token and I do gain the unrest not worried about that um, and then I can put a card from my hand into my history let's put advance into my history so that it's out of my deck that's my second action for my third trick I need to replace this hold on we get corruption Let's put out Coinage. Coinage is going to be a good card for us. We'll put it right here. We can slide this up and this up. Put it right there. And that's my third action. I am done. I think I'm going to discard everything. Let's see. Let's put one up here. Let's put it on Metropolis. And then I think... Trying to set if I want to keep prosperity or not. Praiseworthy. I don't mind if that comes back around. So let's keep prosperity and discard the rest. That one got discarded. These got cleaned up. And we have seven. So one two three four five six seven that's the end of our deck rolling 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 they get five all right so that's going to come with a population they exile a card they're going to exile shrine draw here and gambling comes out card number two is an unrest goes back to the deck agriculture this is going to be a pinned card uh, if able, acquire a region. So they're going to acquire this region right here on top of their deck. We replace it. There's nothing up here, so we replace it with uh, another region. Doesn't get an unrest because it's a region. And then we put this card into their history. Card number four is Egyptian. It's a tributary card. They're going to gain two of each resource. And they're going to discard the top card of the deck. There's two of each resource. And then put this into history. So they've thinned out their deck a bunch this round. This goes here, this slides down. And one, two, three, four. They have five cards left in their deck. Okay, it's our solstice phase. Let's slow down a little bit because we want to make sure we hit everything. We can gain two from our coinage. Uh, we can also, it has an has a exhaust ability, which is great. Well, let's see, nothing there. We're going to wait on that one. Do we want to discard cards and gain cards? Uh, do, 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 do. Let's do, let's exhaust, or exhaust. Let's discard prosperity to draw a card. This means that we can get a new card from here. Let's see. Let's get Rome the Eternal City. I don't know if I paid for the last one. What was the last one? Senate? Did I pay for it? We're going to say I didn't. It cost four. 
So we'll take this 10, 5, and 1. We had plenty. Uh, and then, now that I've hopefully done that and caught up, uh, this cost 3 and 3. This was really expensive. But, I mean, that's a whole city. 3 and 3. And then we put this into our discard. We shuffle that up. And I'm hoping to draw it this turn. We have lots of ways to draw cards. So that was only our first draw. So we get that. Temple. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's discard Temple, I think. Yeah, let's discard Temple. Or Dalmatia. Let's discard Temple. Draw a card. Praiseworthy. We have to discard a card. Let's discard Oracle. And that satisfies bread and circuses. That's our solstice phase. Wow, all of that is just solstice. That's cool. Now, stinks only can do three things. Um, let's play that. It's free to play. We gain a population. We have to do something about our population or the resources here. Okay, we're going to play Cataphract. It says each player abandons a region. So they're going to discard one of these. You may acquire a region or a tributary. I really don't want to do either. So I don't think I'm going to. You may garrison this card. So I can place this card in the garrison, or as a garrison, and trigger uh, the region that I put it in and trigger that effect. So I'm going to garrison it here. And it says gain, and then I do all of this again as if I just played it. Gain two materials. Fantastic. Exile a card from the market. Let's exile, let's exile Woodlands. And we draw here. It's going to be Onager. And then I may garrison another card which is just, wow, that's cool. Do I want to garrison another card? I do, Dalmatia? No, I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I think it's fine. Okay. Let's see. I have two left. Let's play Praiseworthy, and we're going to take Metropolis. We're going to break through so we don't have to take the Unrest. We get another one of these, bring us up to 10. We have this nice double-dotted 10. Then I'm going to play Metropolis down as a pin card. We'll put it above Coinage. We are now a Metropolis. Actually, we'll put it above City of Rome. Yeah, we'll put it above City of Rome here. And it's got a nice Solstice ability. And that should be all three of my actions. I think I want to keep my Glory card, and I think I'll discard everything else. So we need to press a progress token. Let's refill this. It is a port. Don't care about that. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to put it on corruption. Clean up tokens. Uh, we should have had an exhaust. I'm so bad about that. Should have had an exhaust on that. We'll take it off. And these get discarded. We have one. We have a hand of seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. So one more would have given us another card. That's okay. They're rolling the dice and they roll the chunky one. So number two is their glory card. They can't do anything because they only have one region. So they are going to break through for a region. So that means there's no more regions here. They can't draw. There's none out. They can't grab that. So they're going to flip cards over until they can grab a region. Oh, there we go. So that's going to go on top of their deck, no unrest, this gets discarded. Bactria, it's gonna come with a population, go here, they exile a card, they're going to exile ports, and this deck is starting to get really low. Ooh, Jade Mask is a fantastic card. Next one they do is an unrest card, and then prosperity. They're going to discard the top card of their deck, gain one 
resource of each type for each region in place. So that's two of each. So let's do three makes a five. And then they're going to have two there. So there they go. They discard this and we may draw a card. We certainly will. So that's our discard deck. I think I'm going to take Emperor Trajan. Yeah, I think I'm going to take Emperor Trajan. He's expensive. Or no, he's not that expensive. Two materials and one population. Into our discard pile, and we're going to draw a new card. We gained Dalmatia. And I won't forget to put an exhaust token there. That's all of their cards. They put one on Jade Mask. That's great. I would love to get that. And they're finally getting through their deck again. One card left. Solstice phase for us. We're going to gain two tokens right here. Um, let's discard an Unrest. To draw a car, actually, I think I'm going to gain a population. Let's discard a prosperity. To draw a card, let's discard Dalmatia to satisfy bread and circuses, and we'll get rid of the unrest in our discard pile. All right, I think the first thing I'm going to do is draw or is play this. I may draw a card. Assyrians, fantastic. They discard a card. And I have one, two, three bags. I can gain three population or three materials. Let's gain three population. All right. That is my first action. Okay, my second action is going to be the Senate. I may acquire a... Civilized card. Let's get Corruption. That's going to give us another token. And it's going to give us an Unrest. And I may put a card from my hand into History. Um, I think I'm going to put Unrest into History. Not Unrest. I'm sorry. Put Coast into History. I don't know what I was thinking. All right. And then for my third action, I want to put out Rome, the Eternal City. And this one says, let's grab this, only, a play, only playable if Rome, City of Rome is in play. It is. Put City of Rome into your history. So this is going to my history. And now my social stability is basically the same, except I don't have to discard the card. So we have a metropolis called the Rome, the Eternal City. We have... a uh, adjacent city and we have some good things going on we need to refill this with an unrest card mercenaries it's a good card and we're gonna place this on mercenaries let's play Assyrians before we finish before we do that sorry and gain one population to get this out of my hand and then we can clean up Tokens here, that one comes back, discard what we played, and I want to keep glory, and that's it. One, two, three, four, so that gives us five in total. We can gain one of these last ones. Let's go ahead and do... Ooh, let's do a uh, Roman invasion. It's going to cost us. It's going to cost us uh, three population. Shuffle that up. And we should have one more card. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, two more cards. Six, seven. Roll the die. We have one card left in our deck for uh, our developments. So we are way ahead of them. They just got caught up in buying stuff. The step goes here gives them a population they exile a card is going to be gambling here we go whoops leadership all oh, leadership's a great card 
All right, here we go. Export. So it's again other. Uh, if able, acquire tributary. Can't acquire a. They're going to want to acquire one of these two. And it's going to be this one because it comes with an extra point. Here we go. They gain the unrest with it too. The next one is another region. They are all about some regions. They exile a card. Let's replace this one first. They're going to exile leadership. That stinks. This card or this deck is going fast now. I would say we have three, six cards left in this deck. Another region, another population, another exiled card. It's going to be Cape. They don't even care about regions anymore. Sacred Pass. They're going to put one on Sacred Pass, scoot that down, deal out two cards, and they are going to grab City of Persepolis, and they're going to flip from a Barbarian Nation to Empire. That means we flip this over from Barbarian to Empire as well. And they're all new actions on that. So let's shuffle these up. And they have thinned their deck just a tad. Not by much. But it's getting all those regions out has helped. They are region happy. There we go. Solstice turn. Let's go ahead and gain two materials. We have no problem with materials right now. Discarding cards, uh, let's discard Oracle to draw a card. Let's discard Dalmatia to draw a card. Senate, fantastic. Um, we just need to discard a card. What do we want to discard? Let's discard Trajan. Let's discard Trajan, okay. Trying to think about how I want this game to end because we are very close to a lot of things happening. All right, let's play an exhaust here on coinage, and we only have five exhausts. So if we have more than five exhaust abilities, or more than four, technically, if we have one on um, our deck, then we can't play our exhaust abilities. So we're going to draw a card, it's an unrest. Uh, shoot, I didn't have a way to get rid of that. That stinks. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. I think for my first action, I'm going to play Praiseworthy, but I'm not going to acquire anything. I'm going to put this into my history so that it's thinned my deck a little bit. And that's seven points now. I have other ways to get cards. I'm not worried about it. Let's play Julius Caesar down. Uh, I may either draw two cards or I may acquire... A region or a tributary there's no regions out there's no tributaries out so oh there is a region I don't want that one uh, so we're just going to draw two cards one two cool and we can put this card or we have to put this card into our history it's out of our deck don't feel like I maximized that but that's okay we're gonna play this for free and gain a population And then, let's play Temple down. Temple, uh, let's see, let's do it like this. Temple says, exhaust, discard one card to gain a progress token. And then I can also return a, an unrest from my discard pile during the solstice phase. So that's going to be my third action, and really, I'm just keep putting this off. So let's keep hold of these two, Glory and Prosperity. We're going to discard everything else. Let's put a Progress Token on something. Let's do Mercenaries, I think. Yeah. This comes off. This one comes off Coinage. And we draw up. I have two cards in my deck. That means we can gain military engineering. And this costs us four, three, four materials, four materials, and one population. Goes into the bottom of our deck. Shuffle that up. Four, five, six, and seven. Fantastic. 
Okay, so now that we've drawn, we have drawn our last development card. So I have triggered the end game. That means that we wait. Remember, this is supposed to be in the middle. So we're going around the table like this. They're going to take one more turn. Then we hit a solstice phase, and then everybody gets one final round. So we're going to get one more turn after this. They're going to get basically two turns. And then we'll do a final solstice phase, and that's the end of the game. So we have a new AI chart for them. Let's see what they do. They're going to do four. Let's move these a little bit. And they're going to do number one is a region. So we look down here. Region comes before pinned. So region says it play this exile a card from the market. So the first card is city and they replace it with a card from here. Uh, city uh, town. Yay. Okay. So no population, they just exile a card in the market and play it down. Unrest. Unrest still gets returned here. They want to get rid of it. They don't want the negative two points. Elders. Elders is a only, the only symbol it has is the uh, leaf symbol. So they look down, no, nothing there. So if able, acquire a region. So they're going to acquire this one point region. That stinks. And they're getting a point for it too. And this goes on top of their deck, and this gets discarded. They skip four, they go to five, exports. It's an attack card and an empire card. So look, attack comes first. So break through for a tributary. So they're going to look, hold on, we need to deal one here first. Pharmacy is a great card. I like pharmacy a lot. They're going to look for a tributary card. There's one right there. So they flip until they get it, and then they shuffle. I'll shuffle while I talk. So let's see what we're doing. Uh, breakthrough for a tributary card. So this is going to go on top of their deck. We gain two resources of materials. And we take an unrest card into our hand. All right, that goes back here. And there we go. That's it for them. They're going to place this here. And they're going to deal out more cards. There we go. So this is our last turn. So our last solstice phase, first thing we can do is we can return the, oh, this will be for my discard pile. Never mind. So we can gain two materials. We are hopped up on materials. And then we can discard a card. I may have, I may have, did I forget that I keep, don't have to discard? I don't remember. We can discard a card. Let's discard this one to draw. Actually, I'm going to gain a population. I'm going to discard a prosperity card to satisfy the solstice. And then I'm going to gain two more population off of City of Rome and Metropolis. Don't have to discard to do it. Just I can gain one or draw a card. And when I did Bread and Circuses, I can do those two. So I have one in my hand and one in my discard. Fantastic. Get rid of two. Okay. So let's exhaust some things. Let's exhaust this to draw a card. I get Oracle. I can exhaust Temple to discard a card. Um, let's discard Oracle. And gain a progress token brings me up to 12. let's do prosperity where did my tokens go all right prosperity all players may draw a card so they're going to discard one we're going to draw one dalmatia and i can gain population i'll gain three more population so let's make that a 10. there we go That's all of that. And then I want to acquire mercenaries. So let's do this. I can acquire cards. So that's going to be mercenaries. It's going to give me minus two points, but I, I will have one more solstice so I can probably get rid of it, especially if I hold up my hand. But it gives me two more progress tokens. 
And then we replace this with Invasion. It's a good attack card. And then this card goes into my history. And then I have one action left. What do I want to do to maximize? Well, I think the only way to maximize is to do a glory card. So, glory card, abandon three. I have three out. So, all of this is going back into my discard pile. I can look at the top three cards and choose one. Uh, we're going to take triumphant because it's 11 points. And then, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. We place a progress token. What do I want them to take? If they're going to take something, let them take town. Oh, no, that would make it three points. Let's do invasion. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I discard. I want to keep that in my hand. I think that's the only thing I care about keeping in my hand. So, there's four, and there's nothing to draw to build from. So, we just shuffle these up. And we go to seven. And I know I got out of order there with cleanup. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. So let's clean all of these up and all of these. It is their last turn. They're going to roll the die and they do a one. So let's see what they do. Minoans it is a tributary card, but a barbarian card. In this case, the barbarian card comes first. Put this card in the history. So they don't do anything. Oh, that feels good. Do more of that, please. Oh, yes, another Barbarian card. It comes before Region card. Put this card into History. Prosperity card. So, let's see. Prosperity is not listed. So, if able, they're going to acquire a Region. No Regions out. So, they're going to take one Progress token. Last card. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So, this just gets put into their History. So, they didn't hit their empire fast enough to clean up. They just it went on this big buying spree. So that's what happens whenever they grab a ton of empire cards before they're ready. And that's what would happen to us. It clogs up their deck. Okay, and we don't need to deal out any more cards. Actually, I'll put this back in their deck. This to the side. We do one last solstice round and then the game is over. So the only thing I need to worry about is getting this unrest out of my deck. So... I can discard a card, let's discard Oracle, and discard the Unrest, and then everything else is May. So, we are good. Alright, that's the end of the game. Fantastic. Let's score some points. Okay, I've sorted out everything from the bot deck, and I'm going to use the BG Stats app to calculate scores because math is not my strong suit. So. I've sorted things out. This card, which is their power card, they don't score that. Uh, it, like I said, it's pretty useless in for the bot player. And then we have all of the cards that were in their deck that do not score. I've pulled those out. And here we have our numbered cards and we just add those up so I'm going to go into the score and we have let's see 11 points 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 so 20 points there plus these are the starred cards they're each worth five points so 5 10 15 20 25 more points and then we have question mark cards. This says six points if in history, which it, it was in the history, or two points otherwise, but it doesn't matter where it was because they still get the bigger number. So six points there. And then if we look up here, we have all of their tokens. So these are all worth one point. So five, six, seven, eight more points. And then they get uh, one point for every 10 in any combination of their resources. So one, two, those are both worth 10, three, 
and then they have four left over that don't get a point. So three more points. And that brings their score to 62. That's actually pretty low for them. That's actually pretty low for them. Let me sort out our cards and we'll do the same thing for us. Okay, now I've sorted out all of my cards and the first thing I did was look through my tableau before I broke it down. Uh, all of the cards in place, sometimes where they are matters. Uh, I didn't have any conditional cards that said points for whatever in play. So I put those into the same cards or the same piles as my deck. Everything on this side is what was in history. Everything on this side was what was either in play or in my deck. These are all cards. These as well are all cards that do not have any points on them. So we'll go through this one first and calculate the score. So I have five points there. Five more points. That's 10, 15, 15, two, four, 20, 24, 25, 26, so let's add those up, 26 plus, let's go over here for any just straight up points, we have 18 points with these two here, so 18, and then this one is conditional, it is in my history, so I get 7 points for that. This one, so that's all that matters where they are. We've already done those, we've already done those. Now we have our starred cars. And let's save that one for last. So this is one point for every four population. So we have 10, 11, 12, 13. So that is three points plus, we're going to do another one just like that. One points for every four, that's three more points. This one says one point for every three, so that's gonna be four points. This one is one point for every five uh, progress tokens. We have, I'm sorry, yeah, one point for every five progress tokens. We have uh, 10 with the remainder, so that's gonna be two points. And then this is two points for every glory or a fame card that I have. So I have one, two, three, I believe there's four in here. Let's see, do, 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 nope, nope. Maybe there's only three. Uh, they should all be pointed cards, so. Looks like I only had three. Okay, so two points, two, four, six more points, plus six, and then I get one point for every one of these, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one point for every 10 of these with three remainders, so nine, 10, 11 more points, and that is it. I scored 80 to 62. Those are both actually decently low scores. I consider 70 to be a low score, 80, I've been scoring over 100. They've been definitely scoring a lot higher than 62. But uh, yeah, there you go. There it is, let's uh, log that on BGG. We have, um, you can see my high score is 115. My lowest score is one, or their high score is 105. So 80 to 62, that's, uh, yeah, that's a little low, but you know what? I won, it was fun, it's always fun. Man, I really just truly enjoy this game. So uh, there's so much good to talk about, so much packed into just uh, some card play. Let's go back up top and talk about Imperium Classic. And that was Imperium Classic. And man, there's so much I love about this game. This game has really just, just took a hold of me and grabbed me so by surprise and I have just really enjoyed every minute that I've played of it. One of the big things I like are the unique civilizations. This is, I've told people, it's kind of like Imperial Settlers or Empires of the North meets through the ages. Where the Empires of the North is, is that you have unique civilizations where yours feels very different than the other one that you're playing against or the one you're playing this time will feel very different than the one you play next time. And they have each of their own personalities and, and that's great. It's so great. And then I, I really get this feel 
that I have finished a game of Through the Ages, that I have finished this grand epic game in usually a smaller time span. It may not look like it from this video, but usually I can play this in 60 minutes to 90 minutes. Uh, and I like that. It gives me that grand epic feel uh, in, in a smaller time frame. They have captured something really, really amazing here. I mentioned the unique civilization play and that carries over to the AI logic. The AI logic is so smart. Uh, David and Nigel have done a phenomenal job with this AI system. It's not, it, it seems a little overbearing at first, uh, but it's just thorough. It really is, and it's not that hard. Once you've gone through it a couple of times, you'll start to get the hang of it, and you'll start to have memorized what it does until you play a new civilization, of course. But what it loses in some of that uh, complexity, a, a little bit of a learning curve with each civilization, you retain with the uniqueness of play that you would get in multiplayer. Each AI civilization is gonna feel unique. It's gonna be different to play against and you're gonna have to figure out how am I going to uh, play against this as much as you're gonna figure out how am I going to play the, the empire that I have chosen. So that's just really amazing to me. Another thing that I really enjoy about this game is the deck building mechanic in this. I, I really don't feel like I'm playing classic deck builder. Uh, which is new and refreshing to me. It, just like this kind of has that through the ages, which is, is not a deck builder, uh, but you're acquiring cards to fire off combos, to build up your tableau. That's what it feels like to me. Uh, I mean, there's times where I'm acquiring cards, yes, uh, and I definitely want to build my deck up, but it's more about gaining the cards that you just don't have access to yet in your own deck, and then supplementing what your nation can already do and already grow into with the cards in the row. And there's times where I, I don't buy things or turns where I don't want to buy things because it's gonna mess up the combos that I've built in my deck. And it really does feel a lot more like kind of Mage Knight, the feeling I get with Mage Knight. I don't really think of that when I'm playing that, hey, this is a deck builder, I'm building up my deck. It's more about, oh, this will work good with my combo, but I'm more interested in what am I playing this turn? What combos can I fire off with what's available to me? And that's amazing. That is great. So. I really enjoy the deck building aspect of this. I like how it flips over from acquiring those more general cards to the free open market you have with your development cards. Um, it's just, it's amazing, it's, it's refreshing, it's something new, and I really, really enjoy that. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the amount of variety with this game. I mean, not just in the amount of, of civilizations in this box, not just talking about getting the second box. I have Legends, I've opened it, looked through it, but I haven't played with anything in it because there's so much left in this game that I haven't even begun to scratch the surface with it yet. And I am so excited that this game will be waiting for me. I can pull it out on a regular basis and still discover something new. Even if I go and revisit the Romans versus, versus the Persians, there's still gonna be something new that I discover, something new that I see. And I just, I love that. I love that I can look at this small box. I mean, it's not a huge box compared to a lot of games I have, this small box, and know that there's something new waiting for me each time. And that is a game of Imperium Classics. This is a game I would love to put in the rotation and come back and revisit every so often. I think there's just so much to this game that's worth seeing. And I'm doing a playthrough where we don't have to do the rules overview. So if you enjoyed this content, please think about giving this video a thumbs up so that I know that this is something that you would like to revisit in the future on this channel. If I made any mistakes, please put those in the comment section below with the timestamp. I try not to, and I'll try to catch all of them, but sometimes some just slip through. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up, help the channel out, help us grow, help us reach more people and share the joy of board games and solo board gaming. As always, thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy gaming.